Hey guys, Kick Rip here. So today, we're gonna talk about gloves. Now, the hands are arguably the hardest part of the body to insulate, and that's because they're a very complex part of your body, right? It's not like your torso where you just need to keep it warm and keep those organs from shutting down and killing you, but you need your hands to complete very fine tasks. So we need to balance warmth and dexterity, right? And the other reason that it's hard to insulate is because it doesn't actually produce a lot of body heat. So the bigger and thicker your glove is, uh, you're going to be sacrificing a lot of dexterity. However, if you have a very nice, light, dexterous glove, well, then you're gonna be sacrificing a lot of warmth. So as you can see, I have a ton of gloves on the table here, and that is because different gloves are gonna do different things. You're not gonna have one pair of gloves that's gonna be able to solve every one of your problems, so you wanna have a good variety. Thanks to Venture Surplus, I have an even wider variety of gloves to show you. That way I can give you good feedback and let you know what to look for. They have an entire cold weather section for you to go through. And they also have awesome prices, especially when you use discount code KITCREEP at checkout. Not only did Venture send me out these gloves, they also sent me this really cool uh, waffle fleece cap that I have on here, uh, as well as this individual camo net that I have as a uh, tablecloth right here. This is super cool. I can actually take this off and I can camouflage my pack or I can camouflage myself. So big thanks to them. Definitely let them know that I sent you over by using that discount code. So first we're gonna start off with our lightest weight, warmest weather glove and work our way down to the coldest weather, heaviest weight glove, all right? So the first kind of glove that I wanna talk about is going to be a contact glove. A contact glove is going to be a glove that lets you touch more things than you normally could without it. Um, what I look for in a contact glove is going to be something that has a leather palm. That way it's going to protect my hand against abrasive things or sharp objects, right? And real leather is also going to protect your hand from high heat, right? So if I'm working with fires or hot cookware handles and stuff like that, uh, hot gas blocks and barrels, it's probably a good idea to make sure that your glove is going to allow you to, you know, briefly touch those. Um, now I also look for fire retardant materials for the synthetic parts because again, I don't want the synthetic breathable material on my glove to melt to my hand, right? So because of that, my preferred contact glove is going to be a US Flyers glove, right? They're very dexterous and I rarely feel the need to have to take these off to complete fine tasks. A contact glove is really something that you should be able to leave on all the time and not have to take off and just let it protect your hand. So not only is the US Flyers glove absolute G-Watt drip, but they're also excellent as backcountry camping gloves. Uh, you can use these to repel because of that leather palm. But this is an all around amazing work glove and they're also really cheap, right? Uh, Venture Surplus actually sent these out to me. I think this might be my fifth or sixth pair, um, but they're just stellar, right? So they have a goat leather skin palm as well as Aramid on the back to keep them breathable. I also love that I can even increase the protection of my hand by uh, rolling the sleeve down. And I typically break contact gloves into two different categories. And that's going to be a shooting glove and a climbing glove, right? Now these are black diamond climbing gloves and something that people get wrong about climbing gloves is that you don't actually use them to climb. Right? You wanna use your bare hands while you're climbing. You gotta develop those calluses, no real way around it. The climbing glove is actually for repelling and belaying, right? So it's gonna prevent you from getting nasty rope burn on your hands, destroying them, and then leaving you unable to climb any farther, right? That, that wouldn't be very good. Now, not only are climbing gloves great for climbing, but because they are made out of good leather, uh, these could be really good shooting gloves for you too, if that's a consideration. But the only issue is that with a climbing glove, they're probably not gonna be made out of fire retardant material. But something that I found interesting is that Venture Surplus actually sells climbing gloves on their website. So I thought that that was really cool. Uh, these are coming from a company called Five Star, and these actually have a pretty nice snug fit. The fingers themselves are actually ventilated, which is super cool. Uh, it's got a real leather palm and it's got really nice reinforcements in all of the right places. Another really cool thing, they are actually uh, touchscreen compatible, right? So you don't have to take these off to you know, take cool photos of your friends on the side of a mountain, uh, take little goon pics, right? So that's super cool. Love seeing that Venture Surplus has climbing gear uh, because we should all be getting out into those mountains. Now, of course, on this channel, we love talking about fourth season type two fun. So one really cool way that I've seen people uh, trying to add some insulation to their contact glove has actually been 
a latex glove, right? This was something that was made popular by US Special Forces. And what's great about the latex glove is that it is actually going to waterproof your hand from the outside. Uh, and it's also so thin that it's gonna fit under most of your contact gloves, right? Now, these black diamond gloves, they are so tight, so form-fitting that there's no way I could fit like uh, a wool liner underneath here, but I can fit one of these latex gloves really easily. So this is a really cheap, really lightweight and effective way to insulate your hand for short periods of time. However, if you are gonna be out in the backcountry for extended periods of time, I would not recommend doing this. Uh, not only is it gonna block moisture from coming in from the outside, but it's also going to keep all the sweat from your hand on the inside. So if it is, you know, in freezing conditions, hypothermic conditions, when you do actually remove that glove, well, now your hand is soaking wet and that's a really good way to get frostbite, right? The special forces guys will say that too. So a much better way for you to insulate your hand, add some insulation to your contact glove is going to be a very, very lightweight wool liner, right? These are smart wool 150 weight liners. 150 is gonna be light or ultra light. One of the biggest issues with hands is that although they do produce a lot of sweat, they don't produce a lot of heat, right? So having lightweight wool is a really good idea uh, because it is going to get wet, they are gonna get sweaty, right? However, if I do try to put on my climbing glove over here, it works, but it's a little tight, right? And what happens is if you end up compressing the blood vessels in your hand because your glove is too tight, well, guess what? Your hand is not warmer. Now it's going to lose blood flow, get cold and numb, right? So, so if you can't fit a liner underneath whatever contact glove that you're wearing, um, a really cool thing that you can do is you can take a nice big wool glove like these US Marine Corps uh, wool glove liners that Venture Surplus sent out to me. You can take these and then snip off all the fingers. You can actually fit it over the top of your glove. Your fingers don't really produce a lot of heat. So you're insulating the palm and then it's pumping warm blood into your fingers. That way you can still have really good dexterity with your contact glove, uh, but you're gonna insulate your hand just a little bit more from the outside. And also these US Marine Corps gloves, they actually have uh, rubber little dots on the palm. That way you can get some pretty good grip with these. So that's what I really like about these. And I can't take credit for this. I totally stole this idea from Redbeard Tactical on Instagram. I learned that from him like a year or two back. Uh, he's a wealth of knowledge, definitely check him out. And I also recently saw that Kevin from Spiritus Systems put out a video on gloves and he showed off the same thing, right? Uh, and something that he mentioned is that if you do start putting synthetic materials on the palm, well, that can melt, even though the wool is going to be fire retardant, that material, that rubbery material is not, and that could melt to your skin. That could be an issue, right? If you haven't seen Spirit of Systems glove video, I definitely recommend checking it out. Now, speaking of glove liners, I usually carry a couple pairs out with me. And the reason for that is, if you do end up wetting out a pair, you can take them off, put them inside of your jacket, and then cook them off with your core body temperature. And then you can put on another pair of liners and just kind of rotate through those, swap them out, uh, cook a set, wear a set, cook a set, wear a set. But I won't carry two of the same weight. I will carry a lightweight one like the Smart Wolves, and then I'll carry a heavier weight uh, like these Outdoor Research Hurricane gloves. Now, moving on from there, uh, I'm gonna talk about my cold weather contact gloves, right? So these are gonna be gloves that are still gonna be very dexterous, but they're just gonna insulate our hands a little bit better, right? So once temperatures get to that hypothermic range, somewhere around like 45 degrees Fahrenheit or seven degrees Celsius for all my European viewers, I'm doing the conversions as I go. So once we're in like hypothermic and wet conditions, kind of like spring and fall, then I'll leave these gloves at home and I'll swap into my cold weather ones, right? So these are the Massly cold wet weather Gore-Tex gloves. And these are literally the cold wet weather versions of the Summer Flyers gloves, right? So what's great is that we are still using a goat leather palm, super durable, flame retardant. And then we also have fire retardant uh, material on the back. And then um, they have a little Gore-Tex membrane inside, right? So if the conditions are super wet and the threat of outside moisture is a bigger threat than inside moisture, well, then I'm gonna swap into these. The only issue is that they really don't breathe so well, right? Gore-Tex is only more breathable than like a garbage bag. I really don't like to wear these during super high levels of activity just because once these do get completely soaked, even if I put them 
inside of a pocket like this, it's really hard to get these things dry. So I typically save these for like, you know, a walk on a trail on a rainy day or sitting around camp, right? Because these are flame retardant, once again, I do like to use these to build fires or, you know, use hot cookware. Another really cool thing is that you don't sacrifice a lot of dexterity inside of these things. So these are still really good shooting gloves. They fit inside of a trigger guard very well. These shell gloves from Massley, they don't layer super well. So it's kind of hard to fit a liner on the inside of these. I can just barely squeeze one of these smart wool liners on the inside and I can definitely feel my thumb get compressed. Now, although Venture Surplus did not send these Massley Gore-Tex gloves out to me, they are available on their website. You can actually see me wearing these gloves in my PCU video in the very beginning, but uh, I've had them for a while. I can definitely attest that they're great gloves and they are available at Venture Surplus. The only issue is that they don't really have a lot of insulation, right? They don't use Primaloft or fleece lining. It's really just a shell, right? Somewhere around that, uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, right? Uh, that's just freezing. Um, I'll switch into these really awesome soft shell fleece line gloves from Arcteryx. These are the Arcteryx Venta gloves, and these are great for cold, dry conditions, right? If you're dealing with super wet snow, then yeah, these Gore-Tex Masley gloves might be your better bet. But if the snow is not just instantly melting and wetting out your glove, then these are what you're gonna want. Um, I noticed this when I was doing a 24 hour Spartan race, right? They had us doing burpees in the snow and I noticed that I was able to get away with doing burpees with these on my hands for a pretty good while before they started to get wet, but then they dried off very, very quickly. These are soft shells, so they breathe super well, but they do also have Gore-Tex and Finium in them, which is gonna make sure that the wind doesn't rip the heat away from your hand instantly. And these are an excellent approach glove, right? An approach glove is a glove that you're going to wear as you are approaching your climb, right? If you're gonna go ice climbing, if you're gonna go get to the ice, these are what I'm gonna wear as I'm hiking or trekking out there, right? Uh, you're gonna get real sweaty, real hot. So instead of wetting out my you know, Gore-Tex glove, by the time I get there, I take it off, my hands are super cold because they're so sweaty. Instead, I can use these. They'll keep my hands nice and warm and fairly dry. And even when I did Mount Washington, I wore these most of the time uh, from the bottom to somewhere towards the summit. These did a really good job while I was working hard and being real hot and sweaty on the way up. Also, our Terex Venta gloves do have touchscreen compatibility, so that means that you can watch all of your favorite YouTubers on the ski lift up because you don't have any friends take some really cool photos up on the top of the mountain. And honestly, that is important to me because I hate having to take off my glove and just have my bare skin just exposed to the cold air and the wind while I'm trying to like, you know, let my mom know I'm not dead yet. And uh, not a Zoomer thing, I promise, more of a safety thing, right? Next up, I wanna show off a pair of gloves that I got a while ago, and I've just been dying to talk about these. These are the Outdoor Research Poseidon gloves. You probably noticed these in my PCU video. And um, I just wanna say that these gloves suck, okay? Uh, you'll probably know these better as the gloves that are all over eBay in new to unused condition uh, in not copyright Desert Marpat or AOR1 uh, guacamole camo or AOR2 and then multicam coyote and then black. And what I've noticed is that these palms are made of like Hypalon. Now you probably know Hypalon as being that weird material on the shoulder strap of a Cry JPC. And I'll tell you right now, it does not make for a good glove material, okay? Uh, especially when the glove is not anatomically designed, right? It doesn't have a pre-curve in it for a finger, right? And then my fingers only bend at like a 90 degree angle. And that sucks because then I can't really do fine tasks in these gloves because well, they don't bend with my fingers, right? So I will say that when a company does advertise pre-curving their gloves, that is something to look for. That is kind of important because this sucks. So don't let the cool Gucci camos tempt you. These gloves stink. There's a reason why they're all brand new on eBay. So it took me literally until this year to find the best insulated five finger glove for me, right? Gloves are very personal and it's very hard to find something that's going to fit my exact hand shape. This year, I came across these gloves. These are the Rad Baltoros, and these are the best things that I've ever had the pleasure of putting on my hands. 
So these are technically a belay glove and a belay glove is a glove that you're gonna use while you are belaying someone, right? So after you're done climbing and you're all hot and sweaty, you're gonna start cooling down pretty quickly. So it's probably a good idea to put on some nice warm gloves while you're belaying your partner. That way they don't get cold and numb. And then if they fall, you just drop them because you can't really feel your hands and then they die, right? So a, a good belay glove is going to be a very dexterous and very warm five finger glove, right? I mean, obviously you could belay someone with some mittens, but you're not gonna get as good dexterity with those, right? And these Rad Ball Toros have amazing dexterity and warmth value because they're not Gore-Tex. And that's because when you have something that is Gore-Tex, there's just a lot of loose material and you will feel that sliding and gliding against each other while you're trying to do things. These soft shell gloves have amazing dexterity. They move with my hand and that not only makes these great for belaying, but also for ice climbing, right? Another thing is that I tried these on in a store before I bought them. So I knew that they were gonna fit perfectly, but you can't do that on the internet, right? So that's one of the reasons why I really like Venture Surplus. They have hassle-free returns. So if you do end up getting a pair of gloves from their website and they just don't fit right, you can return them and you can swap them out for what fits you, right? But because these are soft shells, these are gonna be ideal for cold and dry conditions, right? If it gets super cold or if it starts to get a little wet, then a soft shell might not be what you want. So a really cool solution that I've come up with is going to be these Outdoor Research, uh, I'm pretty sure these are the Adaptive Glove System, five finger insulated shells. And these fit beautifully over my Rad Ball Toros. So that means when I'm done climbing in these super awesome, super sexy gloves, then as I start to cool down and I'm blaying my partner, well, I can throw on these shells, keep my hands a little bit warmer and a little bit more waterproof. Now, these Outdoor Research Five Finger Fire Brand gloves do actually have their own insert on the inside, uh, but this insert kind of sucks. So that's why I don't use it, right? Uh, it's just got raw fabric on the palm here. This is just a liner. So that's why I ditched the liners. Uh, however, these are some big, ridiculous cartoon looking gloves. So you are gonna be losing some dexterity. And now for the bad news, these Rad Bell Toros, although they are the best glove I've ever put on my hands, they are $115, right? And these Outdoor Research uh, surplus mittens and gloves, uh, the prices are just going up and up and up and they're harder to find. So these are super expensive. These aren't very easy to get. So there is a really cool alternative. My buddy, who is a much more experienced mountaineer and ice climber than I am, let me in on a little secret. And that is gonna be these gloves. These might look kind of familiar to you. And that's because they're literally just dishwashing gloves, but with acrylic synthetic insulation on the inside. They're about 30 bucks. They're actually very warm. They're waterproof because these are natural rubber palms, right? This is real rubber. And then they also have a snow skirt down here at the bottom, right? So these are literally just cold weather dishwashing gloves. Um, but I did wear these on my ascent of Mount Washington. And I will say that when I swapped out of my Arcteric soft shell gloves and I threw these on as I got closer to the top and the temperatures were dropping, I felt so much better, right? I could actually feel the uh, head of my ax through my soft shell glove. But once I put this on, that cold metal was not getting through as easily. My hands were very warm. And as I was crawling up that mountain and plunging my hands into the snow, I didn't feel an ounce of water get through. $30 dishwashing gloves are a super cracked solution, all right? However, I will say that a $115 pair of gloves is going to be better in a lot of ways than a $30 pair of gloves. But is it really worth it to you? If you don't have good cold weather mountaineering gloves, start with these. And then over time, you might start to find that you need a little bit more from them and then get yourself a really nice pair of gloves. And even if you have really expensive gloves, pick these up anyway, right? You won't feel bad about beating the snot out of them. All right, so we're moving down the temperature range and I'm talking somewhere around like 
zero Fahrenheit or I think negative 17 degrees Celsius, right? Once we start getting around there, a five finger glove is just not really gonna cut it anymore. And the reason is that each finger is going to have to individually heat itself up, but they don't produce a lot of heat by themselves, right? So that's where something like a mitten comes in handy. However, a mitten is going to significantly reduce your dexterity, right? And that's why these three finger mittens exist. These are the MGS modular glove system, whereas these are the AGS, the adaptive glove system. So this is an insulated Gore-Tex three finger glove or trigger finger glove, right? So we have our thumb, our pointer finger, and then all of our other fingers are keeping themselves nice and warm in this pocket here, right? However, the only issue with these gloves is that these shells actually really suck. And you can tell that it's just a super stiff, awkward material on the palm. So in this case, we actually don't care about the shell. We care more about the liner. This liner is super nice, super warm, and uh, you get lots of really good dexterity, right? Now, this is not waterproof. This is a soft shell, essentially, but it's gonna be a lot warmer than most any five finger glove that you have, right? Even these five finger gloves, they are super thick, super bulky. It's a lot harder to complete tasks with them but these ones give you a lot of warmth and a lot of dexterity because of that three finger design. Now, again, the MGS and AGS gloves are pretty hard to get at the moment, but if you do want a really good three finger glove, then you should probably look to Europe. Three finger gloves or trigger finger gloves are very popular in the European military surplus market. And that's because, well, they got those Alps. So these are, Italian sniper mittens. But I wanted to specifically show off these Italian ones because I used to have a pair of Swiss ones and instead of the finger coming out of the top like this, the finger actually came out of the bottom. And what I noticed is I like these Italian ones way better because it gives me a much better feel with the trigger, right? When it comes out of the bottom, it felt a little less natural than when it came out of the top. And then if you're not gonna use that, well, you just pull your finger out of that third finger and then it secures with Velcro up here. And uh, well, now you have a legit mitten, right? And these also have a felt or wool liner on the inside, so that's great. Europeans love wool, so. And then of course, our warmest possible glove is going to be a mitten. And that's just because all of your fingers are gonna be able to heat themselves up. They're all gonna be super happy inside of this thing. But a mitten is going to be your hot hands out in the field, right? So if your hands are starting to get cold, instead of pulling out those chemical hand warmers, then you really wanna use a mitten, right? I know people like to use those muffs that you just throw both your hands inside of and cook them. But the thing is you have to pull your hands out to do anything, right? At least with a mitten, you're still able to do some things you can, kind of zip stuff up, but it's better than absolutely nothing or exposing your bare hands. But these are the Outdoor Research Firebrand mittens, right? And these are just amazing. These are so friggin' warm. Uh, they not only are insulated Gore-Tex shells, but it does also have a really nice insulated liner on the inside that can actually function as a standalone mitten. And they actually have these rubber reinforcements on the thumb and the tip, so you can actually get some stuff done, right? And these standalone outdoor research glove liners are available at Venture Surplus. So definitely check these out just because you can get the, the liners first. And then later down the line, if you do find a pair of the shells for a good price, well, then you can pick those up as well. Now, for me personally, I like to keep these shells somewhere nice and warm or inside of my pack. And on the inside of this shell, I actually like to take the three finger liner and then throw those on the inside here, right? And that means that when I'm out doing some LARP stuff, if I uh, really need to cook my hands, well, I can use these guys, keep them nice and warm. And then when it does come time to, you know, uh, LARP, well, I can pull these guys out and I do have access to that trigger finger right there. So that's super cool. It's really nice being able to have a three finger mitten on the inside of a full mitten. Now, once again, these MGS and AGS Outdoor Research Gloves Getting a little hard to come by now. So thankfully, Venture Surplus sent out a pair of really cool mittens for me to show you guys, right? These are some pretty old school US Air Force mittens. And these are awesome because they have a lot of great features that are not on these newer outdoor research ones. And that is going to be the fact that they have this fur ruff on the back of the palms. 
And that's not only great for, you know, wiping the snot away from your nose, um, but also so that you can keep your face warm. And I actually learned that little trick from Kevin from Spirit Systems. That video is great. Again, definitely go watch that. The only thing is that these are not waterproof, so you wanna make sure that you're using these in cold, dry conditions. But what's really awesome about these guys that I really like is that they actually have a wool liner insert. Now, the Woodland version and the ACU version or UCP version that was issued after these guys, they actually use poncho liner material on the inside, but these older Air Force ones actually have a gigantic wool liner. And that is so cool because again, wool has really great properties. So for all my European viewers, never say that the US military didn't issue wool. They did at some point, just not anymore. And another really cool neat feature is that they actually hang around your neck. And that way when you drop them, they're going to flip upside down and they're not going to let snow pile on the inside like a funnel here. And then when it is time to go put them back on, I do find that it's kind of easy to put them on one handed like that. So that's really cool. And also when you're not using them and you kick them off, well, they're not obstructing whatever it is that you're doing. So if you are in the military, you are shooting, well, they're not gonna be flopping around while you're doing a speed reload, right? So that's super duper cool. These of course are the more modern style where they're going to hang from your wrist. And yeah, as you start to do stuff, they're gonna to start to uh, become a real issue. And when it comes to sizing for a mitten, you wanna make sure that it's going to insulate what you put inside. If you're gonna put your bare hand inside of your mitten, you wanna make sure that there's not too much dead space so that your hand can actually efficiently heat up that space. You also wanna make sure that it's not too tight, right? Um, so if I take a contact glove or my bare hand, I can fit it inside of this size large with the liner. However, if I take out the liner, I can fit another pretty heavyweight five finger glove and try to cook that dry, right? And then when it does come time for me to go climb, well, I can pull my hand out, grab my ice tools and just work my way up. So. When it comes to something like these US Air Force mittens, so because all the insulation of this glove is gonna come from that wool liner, um, you do need to keep that liner in there. If I was going to try to fit my warmest five finger glove or belay glove on the inside, it's not going to fit. So if I wanted these to be able to insulate these, then I'd wanna go maybe one or two sizes up. Now, one last thing that I wanna show you guys is going to be some cold weather glove accessories. And the coolest glove accessory that I found in a long while is going to be the Outdoor Research Overwipe. So these are typically paired with the mittens, right? So if you're static and you're laying down in the snow, probably gonna be wearing mittens and you probably wanna cover up that hideous coyote brown. But yeah, so that's really cool. It's just gonna cover that up a little bit and it's gonna help blend in with the snow. It can also be used over these soft shell not waterproof three finger gloves. And what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna add some water protection, right? So this is gonna make it a little bit more water resistant all the way down here. And then you're also going to add a snow skirt to make sure that snow is not gonna get up inside of there as well as the wrist strap. So if you do kick these things off, well, now you have an upgraded three finger or trigger finger liner. And then of course you can also use it with the Firebrand five finger glove. But yeah, they advertise it on the mitten. You don't have to use it with the mitten, but you should probably be using it with a pretty substantial glove, right? It's not gonna work super well on like a really lightweight glove. So once again, I just wanna reiterate that your hands just don't produce a ton of heat. So it's not gonna be as easy for them to cook off your glove as well as it's going to be for your torso to cook off your base layer. Uh, the best way for you to cook that off is really just to take it off and then put it on the inside of your jacket. Now, fortunately, all of my jackets, including my level seven, are gonna have some really nice size pockets for me to shove my gloves into. So these internal mesh pockets here are gonna keep them very close to my body and help try to cook those off. I can pull out my nice warm mittens that were in there, but not every jacket is going to have really nice big pockets like that on the inside. A really good way of going about that is to actually just unzip your jacket and then just put it inside of there, right? Now, this is generally a better idea if you're wearing a harness that's going to seal off the bottom of your jacket. That way your glove doesn't just fall out 
uh, and off the side of the mountain. Even if your gloves do have some really nice little clip points, uh, like these Rabal Toros that make it go upside down so that snow doesn't get in there, uh, I still wouldn't recommend doing that. I still recommend that you actually put them inside of your jacket, keep them nice and warm, try to cook them off, and just have a nice rotation of gloves going, right? So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you learned something. And if this saves even just one person's fingers from having to be amputated, then I'm a happy boy, all right? So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.